Hi YouTube. The uh, the backdrop is a bit of an inside joke with uh, Palladium Ballerina. So on my uh, on my Fear Premiums video, uh, Veritas Files brought up a couple of really good points. I'd like to address them in a video. It, he asked me why I'm dancing around the topic of Syria, um, and also he feels like I'm whistling past the graveyard a little bit um, when I when I talk about retirement planning. Um, you know, I, I talk about my goals and, and what I'm working towards, but I'm talking about it as if society will be functioning normally. And, uh, you know, I, I'd like to, uh, I'd like to talk about that. This will not be short. Concise is my kryptonite. Well, we'll, we'll start with the, um, with the retirement piece. Okay. I am very proud to be a Vermonter. I, I, I love the place that I live. It, it, it's, it's very unique. And this isn't, you know, where I live is better than you kind of thing. I'm just telling you that it's different up here. It's funny, when somebody talks about prepping, if you're, uh, if you're in Newark, New Jersey, sitting in a one-bedroom apartment, the concept is going to be a little bit foreign. And you're also going to be most susceptible if, any, if society ever broke down. We've seen that. Okay, we, we've seen that in an urban setting, supply chain disruption, whether it's uh, from a natural disaster or whatever it's from, is not good. The logistics of uh, helping all those people, it's just not there. You know, it's funny, um, Hurricane Irene devastated the southern part of the state. Devastated it. Whole roads washed out, people completely cut off. Didn't really hear so much about it on the uh, news, did you? It just turned into neighbors helping neighbors. That's the way it is up here. That's just the way it is up here. You know, prepping really isn't a huge adjustment in lifestyle. You know, it's funny. Um, people always use Texas as the model of, uh, of gun control laws and, and how allowing the citizens to carry leads to very low crime rates. When you get a second, Google, um, Google that stuff on Vermont. One of the lowest crime rates in the country. And yet, we have very uh, liberal, very lenient uh, gun laws. People carry up here. Nobody ever mentions that. Very low gun violence up here. Very low. I mean, I don't know if we're a product of our environment, but there's just not a lot of crime up here. So my view of whether you want to call it a dollar collapse, whether you want to call it supply chain disruption, whether you want to call it just a new paradigm, my view is different on what it would look like. Maybe I'm being um, overly optimistic, you know, when people get desperate, uh, you know, even the nicest of places will break down, okay? There's a lot about the economy that doesn't feel sustainable to me. We, we've talked about this so many times. But I, I, I truly have no idea what the other end of that looks like. I know there's a lot of warning signs out there. Um, I know there's a lot of trends. Uh, you know, we're, we're losing a whole generation of uh, workers here. There's going to be tremendous skill erosion. You know, kids entering the workforce with these huge student loans. God, there's so many videos to make on all this stuff. I am doing everything that I can within the system as it's currently constituted to, to save for the future and, and to, to put myself in the best position that I can be no matter what, this, what the outcome is. Okay, just by being a precious metals investor, by being, by living in the country and living, 
a little bit differently. You become like an accidental prepper. You know, our grandparents were preppers before there was a term for it. Remember how you'd go to your grandparents' house and uh, they always had a garden and they always had a ton of uh, jarred uh, vegetables in the uh, pantry and then you'd go downstairs and your grandfather built a shelf with two by fours and, sh and uh, boards and there'd be all kinds of canned uh, vegetables to last throughout the year. That was just the way it was. That was just living. That wasn't prepping. That was living. It's kind of like that up here. It's what people do up here. Everybody has a chest freezer, you know, everybody hunts, everybody fishes. So, you know, there's always a stocked freezer with either game or, you know, sale items over at the local grocery store. It's kind of like you're prepping without, it's not a huge step to go into full-blown prepping, is what I'm saying. When you live in the country, uh, somebody that lives in Montana or Wyoming, their view of a dollar collapse is a lot different than a guy sitting in Gary, Indiana. So I'm doing everything I can within the system as it's constituted, and I, and I hope that I'm prepared for a lot of different outcomes. And you know what? If silver and gold have any utility in a post-dollar collapse world, which, if that were to happen, I believe they would, then I'm covered. But I don't need to put that label on it. But I'm covered. Okay, if, if society is flourishing and all kinds of new technology is changing the world, silver is going to play a big role in that. There's going to be a lot of demand for silver for these products. So, I'm prepared for the worst, but I'm planning for the best. Okay? So yeah, um, maybe I'm whistling past the graveyard. And, and the other piece is, I don't burden my family with this stuff. It's scary stuff. It, it, it's as scary as it gets. I don't burden my family with it. You know, there was an 11-year-old kid that used to post on my channel. His name was uh, Melvin Tanier. And I always felt bad. You know, there was, there was a time when he actually came on and he either made a video, I think he made a video, and he was talking about the, uh, the SHTF scenario. I'm like, the kid's 11. <laughs> 11 years old. My kids don't even know that there is a fan or any S that's heading towards it. You know, I, I don't bog my wife down with that stuff either. I, I basically feel like it's my job, my role, to, to keep an eye on this stuff. You know, I don't want that kind of negativity permeating my, my, my kids' upbringing. And I know many of you feel the same way. But I, I feel like it's my role to shield them from that. And that's the thing is Veritas Files, I know that, you know, I don't know him personally. But what I do know of him is I am absolutely 100% certain that he is uh, the rock in his family's life. And I, I'm sure that he's the guy that they, you know, a lot of people in his life look to. I would be willing to bet that um, all day, every day. But yeah, I, I plan like society will be functioning normally, but I'm also basically an accidental prepper. Okay. It's not as it's not as big of a transition as you would think, from my perspective. As far as Syria goes, I am I am just uh, I'm worn out from attacking all these countries. You know, why would I be worn out? I'm tired of it. I'm just tired of it. The problem is our government, you know, they use, they use absolute terms, right? You can't cross that line or else. When you speak in absolute, somebody's going to call you on it. You know, we always pick on Raw Dog, right? He speaks in absolutes and, you know, he said, I'll never buy silver again. And then two weeks later, he's buying silver because what he really meant was I'm looking for a good entry point for a silver trade or to buy silver. But he says, I'm never buying it again. You know, when you, when you speak in absolutes, there's always going to be somebody that calls you out on it. Even my kids. I'm going to count to three. They never move on one. Never. They never, ever move on one. 
two, nothing. Once I say three, either they'll finally get their butts in gear or they want to know what's after three. Now, if I get to three, the consequence needs to come. Otherwise, I lose face as a parent. And the next time I count, the kids are going to be like, whatever, last time you didn't do a thing. We don't care. It's the same thing with the government. They painted themselves in a corner by using absolute terms on Syria. You, if you use chemical weapons on your people, there will be a consequence. Well, the problem with painting yourself in a corner is it's difficult to get out of it without getting pain all over yourself. Okay, so now a chemical weapon attack happened. And the problem is we don't know if it was the government that did it. We don't know if it was Al-Qaeda that did it. But we can't appear soft on the world stage because of the language we used, which was stupid. It was reckless. You know, China and Russia would like nothing more in this world than to knock us off our perch. They would love to be able to, to take us down as the number one country in the world. They would love to do it. And we're becoming such a soft, complacent society that we're basically leaving ourselves susceptible to like kind of a Trojan horse kind of attack. Whether it's China holding all of our debt. We don't want to be poking Russia with a stick here. And yes, Veritas Files is right. Maybe nothing will come from this. But this is the kind of thing that could potentially lead to a much bigger conflict. And that's nothing that any of us want. You know, the United States, to me... I used to be a b big boxing fan when I was uh, younger. This was back when like Larry Holmes and, and Mike Tyson and Holyfield fought. And I was always surprised at how somebody would make it to the top, they'd be the champ, and they'd always get complacent. And somebody would come up and they were just a little bit hungrier, and they, were, they, they, they would knock the champ right out because they were hungry and the champ was complacent. We are a very complacent society. We're very, we're victims of our own success. You know, people today, there are jobs they just won't do. A lot of the work ethic is gone. People have their nose buried in their phones. There are a lot of troubling trends in society. I mean, I, I agree with him. A absolutely. And it really bothers me that we keep going over to the Middle East trying to uh, trying to change all these regimes. First of all, how would we feel if it was Russia doing this? Going around the world and dis toppling regimes and, and replacing them with their own governments. What gives us the right to do that? Why do we feel that people in the Middle East don't value life the way that we do? I just watched a video uh, that um, Jim Wilson uh, pointed me in the direction of uh, on Josh Galt's channel. A Syrian man found his son uh, that he thought died in the chemical attack, and it was hard to watch. Why do so many Americans think that just because uh, you know they're in the Middle East that they don't love their kids as much as we love ours? It's just it's time to be done with this. It's time to be done with this. Maybe I'm just uh, weary from all these uh, the countries that we keep uh, trying to topple the regimes or, you know, Iraq was just such a mess. And seeing all of our fine young men and women coming back with, uh, you know, lost limbs or, you know, uh, post-traumatic stress disorder or, or, or in coffins, just life, life after life disrupted. Why? You know, after 9-11, I was just as scared and, and as angry as anybody. I really was. And I wanted to see something blow up. 
But, you know, <laughs> thankfully, cooler heads have prevailed since then. You know, it's funny, the administration has said that regime change is not our goal here. Then what are they trying to do? They're going to go over there, and they're going to put on a little fireworks show, and they're going to blow up some buildings. And some innocent Syrians that had nothing to do with any of this are going to die. I just think this is a, a complete mess. And I hope that they reconsider whatever they're planning on doing. And they can say, you know what, intelligence, uh, they, they can kind of hide under the cover of uh, intelligence sources have, uh, have confirmed that it was actually Al-Qaeda that, that committed the chemical attack. I don't care what they have to do. But unfortunately, they're not just going to slink away because then they're going to they're they're lose face. It's just a mess. So if you're looking for my view on Syria, there it is. I really hope it doesn't happen. And yes, this is the kind of thing, poking Russia with a stick, this is the kind of little thing that could just uh, l you know, set the whole thing off. And none of us want that. So, <laughs> all right, so, so there you go, Veritas Files. Um, that's, my, uh, that's, that's my take. Um, ho hopefully it makes sense, all right.